welcome to Biochemistry 4130. My name is Dr. Marion Carroll, and we will continue our discussion uh, in the Fundamentals of Biochemistry by Voigt, Voigt, and Platt. We're on Chapter 7, which deals with protein function, and we'll be looking primarily at myoglobin and hemoglobin function. You should be able to answer the question regarding Bohr's effect in hemoglobin. And I will begin to ask some questions related to topics that we covered previously um, uh, concerning protein structure and stability. And in this question I'm asking that if you have a certain oligomeric protein exposed to beta mercaptoethanol, which is a denaturing agent. You remove that BME from the protein, and what you recover is only a portion of the protein's activity. Why is that? And so you would understand how, we should understand how the multiple interacting subunits can function independent of the whole enzyme. So we have this hollow enzyme versus uh, uh, subunit activity in a protein, which we will we'll discuss. We'll begin with myoglobin and how it binds oxygen. Uh, we'll briefly talk about it specifically and how it is important in uh, increasing the solubility of oxygen in uh, blood, in plasma, and it functions by binding oxygen via the uh, iron plus two oxidation state that is coordinated in the center of a heterocyclic porphyrin ring structure, which you see here, and the oxygen is very important uh, in by it, I'm sorry. The oxygen does not irreversibly uh, oxidize iron. It is maintained in the plus two state by the protein, which in this illustration is represented by the hemoglobin molecule, which is uh, just below the ring. And this coordination between oxygen and histidine through the ion center is what helps oxygen to carry and release, uh, helps hemoglobin to carry and release oxygen to the tissue. When oxygen binds hemoglobin, hemoglobin goes through a considerable structural change. It's common secondary structural elements, the, um, the helical structures, are very much interactive. And in binding oxygen, the whole molecule changes its shape, as you, you will observe here. This is dictated by the presence of oxygen on the heme, and also by the ionic pair interaction that occurs between each subunit of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin and myoglobin both bind oxygen, but their binding kinetics are distinctly different. Even though oxygen has a higher uh, capacity, myoglobin has a higher affinity for oxygen and can carry more oxygen to the tissue at lower oxygen concentration. We will look in detail in the ion pair formation and how this ion pair acts to help hemoglobin to maintain its oxygenated state and how these ion pairs are broken and uh, reformed in the presence and absence of oxygen. Now there components of the blood uh, participate in 
increasing the ability of hemoglobin to deliver oxygen to the tissue and we will look at how uh, bisphosphoglycerate which is BPG the structure here in the center uh, will bind hemoglobin at a different site this site here is located away from where oxygen binds which is up here in the heme molecules and this aids in helping oxygen release tissue, uh, release oxygen to the tissue. There are many, many forms of oxygen, of hemoglobin. There are many forms of hemoglobin that result from single amino acid changes that can occur uh, when the molecule hemoglobin proteins are translated. And we're all familiar with a uh, very, a very much an African American uh, trait, which is called sickle cell anemia, which takes healthy cells like this, and as a result of a single amino acid change uh, in the position where I'm showing a valine would be a glutamic acid, and because of the hydrophobic nature of valine. It creates a protrusion that will create uh, hemoglobin fibers and hemoglobin molecules will stick to each other and as a result these fibers change the overall shape of the red blood cell giving it its cyclic uh, conformation and this is what it contributes to the devastating uh, condition called sickle cell anemia. These red cells, although reduced in capacity, are able to bind hemoglobin or bind oxygen uh, as well as before, but it's their shapes prevent them from being delivered to the tissue, prevent the oxygen from being delivered to the tissue very efficiently. I thank you for listening to this little uh, short lecture, chapter 7. We will go, of course, into it in much more detail. And um, so I hope to see you in class. <laughs>